All right, here we go in three, two, one. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sports Medicine Broadcast, a podcast to promote and improve your practice as an athletic trainer. We're back as part of the AT Inventor series, series Alicia Sai, an inventor of the Sai boards. The uh, it's a balance board. We talked about those, but you can check them out. Si boards, uh, siboards.com. Is that yep. right, Alicia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then. Jay Ostia is the inventor, the owner at Nexus Sports Med, the dead bug. So I know you've seen him a lot on Instagram or Twitter, things like that. That's Jay. He is the inventor creator. And if you're looking at the live video, you can see some of his sketches and artwork up in the background there because he is also a an artist and loves to, to have those up. And that's just part of who he is there. But the real star of the show is Toki. Toki is an athletic trainer. He lives here in Texas with me. He's working in the San Antonio area. Uh, he's also sporting one of the sports medicine broadcast hats because I saw him in January. So a uh, quick shout out. If you see one of us at a live meeting or something like that, we always want to trade some, you know, a hat or shirt or something like that. You know, I, I would most of the time even take the shirt off my, my back and trade it with you if we, if we had that opportunity. So anytime you see one of us at a conference, definitely mention, hey, you got anything to trade? You know, you know, I have a shirt to trade for with you, something like that. Uh, and we love that. This is sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Toki, T-O-K-I. Again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Toki. So Toki invented a medical reduction simulator, and it's pretty cool. I had my hands on it when we were at that conference there in San Antonio. Uh, really cool opportunity and just something that a lot of people don't even see throughout several years of practice, but now they get to practice doing it as part of their learning education. So... Alicia, welcome back to the Sports Medicine Broadcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yep. Jay, thanks for joining us again. I'm glad to be back. And Toki, welcome to the podcast for the first time in person rather than just commenting in the live chat. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. All right. So let's start off with your story. Tell us kind of how you got into athletic training, where you spent most of your career, and then we'll talk about your AT Inventor story. Okay. Uh, I came to U.S. 1992 uh, to become an athletic trainer. There was a Japanese baseball player, Nomo Hideo, around 90s. I usually when they come to try to try to play a major league baseball, they bring like a crew, like a masseuse and translators. And one of the guy was with him, and after one year, he went back to Japan, and he was on a TV introducing the athletic training profession. So. I finished my high school <clears throat> and just I didn't know what to do, what I wanted to do. And then I saw the TV and I was like, you know what, that's it. So that's why I decided to come and I came into the US. But Paul, first problem was I could not speak in English. So I had to learn, spent one year. I went to the Incarnate Word uh, in San Antonio, uh, spent four years undergrad. And then I, I took a state test and then passed the test. The problem was Incarnate Word didn't have any program. So I went to Texas State University bookstore. I, bo I bought the book, books and I read them all. And then I did in internship hours with uh, Billy Hood, uh, trainer at that time. And then uh, I took a test and somehow I passed it. So that's, that's how I started it. And then I got the uh, master's degree also from State University. And I started working at uh, Brackenridge High School in year 2000. Uh, 14 years I worked there, and the 14th year, finally, physically, mentally, my body, and just, I was done. High school football killed me. So, mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, uh, there was a two, uh, in another district in San Antonio, I decided to have a third trainer. And then both kids, uh, the two train high school trainers, they graduated from Brackenridge High School. Uh, I used to work, and then uh, they called me, like, we need she was like all right so i had an interview but this is that was not an interview that was just given to me which was, that was nice and i worked there for six years and then 2000 i resigned my position as athletic trainer because we decided to have kids at home online learning so somebody had to stay home and my wife a uh, little bit she was at home but she was supposed to go back to office so somebody had to stay home so and i decided to stay and that kind of forced me to put 100% to my uh, business. And at the same time, because of the COVID, a lot of games, like, uh, you know, university or high school, 
season canceled, they canceled. So a lot of doctors, they, they missed the hands-on opportunity. So they start looking for something to practice reduction techniques. So I just getting busy, you know, so what's kind of the timing and now I launched the Elmo last year and then uh, just I'm getting busy and now I have a, a deal with DOD Department of Defense so uh, and I found the distributor and just uh, yeah it's getting crazy but that's 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 going right now so and I'm here all right so let's go back a little bit so going from Japan to San Antonio what what made you land in San Antonio, Texas? Uh, my father had some business in Houston. He has some friends. So he was like, well, if you want to go somewhere, you know, maybe Texas might be it. And it's like, okay. I just, I didn't want to go to, um, there's not the most people in the California, but just I want to isolate myself <laughs> trying to learn English and everything. Right. I just, I want to go somewhere. I like know that many Japanese people. So then I kind of searched it in San Antonio, Texas. Not that many Japanese people here. Now we have a Toyota. <laughs> now we have Toyota factory, and then uh, uh, so we have Japanese people. But at that time, not that many. So um, that's why I pick. So you you open the road for for Japanese people to come on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you you talked about you we're at home and you kind of just got busy. Have you reduced uh, dislocations on the field as an athletic trainer? Me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I created the pro, uh, you know, my model. You know, the first year, 2000, we had a away game uh, from San Antonio, Laredo United, about two hours away, uh, 45 minutes away from the emergency room. And that night, there was no author available. Or mm -hmm. something happened, we had to put the kids in the EMS, send him back to San Antonio. And sure enough, I still remember this kid's name, Corey Dante, this look at his left shoulder. So I checked everything, the nerve and everything is dislocated. So I called Dr. Curtis, uh, one of the doctors I know for a long time. And uh, I need to send these kids back to San Antonio, dislocated shoulder. It's like, there's a doctor at. There's no doctor here. Well, you got to reduce it. Shoot. <laughs> So, you know, I, I mean, I was freaking out inside, feel my back, <laughs> you, do this? you know, but, but now I'm, I'm glad they put me in the situation. I had to do it because if there was a doctor on site, he would do it. I won't get to practice, mm -hmm. you know? So, and that, that was the thing. And then, and then I was like, I want to practice reduction technique, but they say anything got to be. Not just CPR mannequin, you know, just compression the ch uh, chest and you know the making sound because you <clears> compressed the <throat> chest. Mm -hmm. So it got to be something. So I look and look and look. I could not find it. So, and as usual, I was drunk, night. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna make my own. So that that's that's how I started it. And then you know I started drawing, and I go to Home Depot, Lowe's, trying to find what kind of material I can use for. And then how are you going to recreate the tension, you know, uh, band, spring, but size, I mean, it's just different things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 2010, 2011, finally, actually, uh, prototype my level, Dr. Curtis approved it. So, and then I start calling, I mean, many, many companies, emails, just call, call, call. And then one company in Seattle, you know, said, well, interesting, send the prototype to us. So I decided to send myself with it, and then uh, and it's a company called Soulbones, and uh, that's how I started it. And in 2011, uh, finally started making the product. I mean, the actual product. Initially, I made it for myself and also the Japanese market because, uh, as you know, the, at that time the KD standard did not say anything about reduction of dislocated joint. So a lot of program directors said, well, we don't need to teach. So why okay. need your product? Hmm. Okay. And so we're not supposed to do it anyway. So all right. But 2020, uh, August, effective August, KD standard added two, uh, three major uh, things. Suture technique, IV technique, and reduction dislocated joint. And they have to teach. So all of a sudden, 
I was just getting phone calls and emails. So this that's 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 what happened to me, so All right, so drunk one night, you started coming up with an idea. How can I practice this? And then there we go. We ended up with the shoulder dislocation. So I've done the, I did the elbow when we were at the yeah. workshop. So what actual products do you have right now? Uh, with the shoulder, an elbow is actually a product. And then ankle dislocation with the distal fibula fracture model. It's coming up hopefully next month we got last stage of prototype manufacturer manufacturer level so i'm gonna have a meeting tomorrow and i think that's the last last meeting and they're gonna start making it and but also that one is the, the combo unit with the big toe dislocation so hmm. yeah and multi-purpose I, yeah yeah and then uh but another one is the the finger dislocation model <laughs> <laughs> There it is, folks. <laughs> so, so if you're watching yeah, YouTube or Facebook, then yeah. there it is. So he just showed you a dislocated finger and put it back in place. So well, I have a, I have a <laughs> hip, but hip is not for our setting, athletic trainer setting, which we see it, but it's not for us. Uh, but I got a uh, request from a Florida uh, emergency room because there are a lot of you know older population and uh, their reflex is a little off, so car accident. The hip dislocation happened all the time. So they requested, so I made it. It's already approved by the doctor in San Antonio. And then uh, also, uh, I don't have here, but TMJ, you know, jaw dislocation, I have one mm -hmm. too. So, yeah, so it's it's already approved by the doctors. So it's it's coming, it's coming. Eventually I wanna, you know, just one body with jaw, shoulder, elbow, finger, hip, angle dislocation and the kneecap dislocation, you know, all in one body. That's my mm -hmm. goal. But mm -hmm. that's how it goes. But it's coming. Oh yeah. So you're gonna have a full skeleton where you can just dislocate all of the joints in the <laughs> yeah. one skeleton at a time. In the future. In the future. That's my goal. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's gonna be one good Halloween um yeah. one good Halloween uh you know <laughs> trick. Yeah. All right. So can I, we've talked a lot about all the, the production and process and before we started recording, both Jay and Lisi were talking about um, the, the the stuff going on with Russia. It's, you know, the petroleum or the wood causing issues and then the inflation and all that stuff, like changing things a lot. Um, and then you mentioned also your your product is for like educational institutions, essentially. Right. So talk to me a little bit about where where you, you feel like that product best fits and then some of the struggles that you're you're having as an AT inventor or a business owner? Well, my product is, of course, with athletic training. That was the main purpose. And I thought that was, you know, that about 300 uh, university with athletic training program, I think. And that was initial. But now I'm getting uh, you know, email from uh, emergency medicine. And also the wilderness medicine. There's a one mm -hmm. guy from UK <clears throat> he bought it, and it's like, and then now I'm getting a lot of requests from uh, emergency med uh, the wilderness medicine. And now uh, I have a already a Navy hospital in Virginia. They bought my uh, one set of the L1 shoulder model, and that's the teaching uh, hospital. And now they're gonna have a huge uh, conference end of this month. And they they have my model, so you know, I re now they the military people they're using it, uh, trying to educate each other. So, uh, initial you know the purpose or fo focus was athletic training, but now it's going everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, the problem right now is the, the material shortage. Used to be five to six weeks delivery. Now it's <clears throat> 12 weeks or maybe longer mm -hmm. because yeah. you know, some just material is they they order enough but they don't get enough they get back order so they have they, they can't go anywhere so a lot of people they order and they're supposed to deliver in six weeks and they call me or the email it's like hey it's supposed to be here it's like i know just, <laughs> and some, there was some po need to be processed by a certain time and they didn't deliver so they canceled it's like mm. well, 
it, it just you know then I, I mean I'm the one you know talking to the customers like I'm sorry but just the manufacturer they don't even have materials so that's the problem right now so got you Alicia look like you're writing down some some notes or some questions did you have some things to ask oh I got a million questions okay. right, let's have them <laughs> Okay, well, let's see. Where do we start? Um, so when you were when you were uh, talking about doctor approved, are you still working with the same set of doctors? And when you're when you're talking about you know doctor approved, is that for the mechanism of dislocation and reduction and the tension? And talk to us about that whole the uh, more detail about that process. Okay, so uh, I work with Dr. Curtis on YouTube. You know, don't know, but he, I know him since 93. He was the, the team doctor for Ian Connor works. I know him since, and then he's the, you know, he's the good teacher. And then, so when I come up with the shoulder model, just, I go his office what weekly or, and just can, is it good enough or not? So all my product is the tension is adjustable. Uh, like, you know, fingers, just same thing. It's, I don't know if you see it, it's spring and just make it tight. The same thing on shoulder model. Uh, it just it, it just make it tight. It, it, it's simple. It's low tech. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, like you know when I make this short this finger model, I there was a hand doctor in San Antonio called Doctor Green's office hand center, and then just I know them well. So just go into the office. Say, can you try this? And it's is you know it's realistic. When I was like, and then no, it's too hard, too tight, too hard. Just just adjust it. So. It's pretty simple. That's how it came up, and then that's I get the tension. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the doctor's approval means like a doctor Curtis, you know, tested it. Uh, you know, his attention is good, and how that how to feel to go pre back in. So and if you know, I, I'm I I have done it. I'm not saying I didn't you know, thousand of it, but I did it. So I know how to feel the shoulder one, how it go back in. And then doctor approve it, and, and I have a recommendation letter from the doctor's office. Like, okay, this is realistic, you know. That's kind of you know approval. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Jay, you you want to go next? You have a question next? Yeah, sure. Um, I saw <clears throat> what was it? You went to University of Houston with their MAT program, right? <clears throat> yeah, and you did a workshop. So. I guess what I'm wondering, so, so for someone like me, you know, who does it, you know, I'm not aligned with a, you know, AT program anymore. How, is there a way for, you know, just athletic trainers out in the field, doesn't matter what setting that can, I guess, use your product or is like, are you planning to do more work, you know, workshops throughout the nation and are yeah, you, you know, charging uh, for those yeah, services? Yeah, well, uh, I, the, in June, I already signed, uh, I'm going to Louisiana. They asked me to okay. come to the hospital system they already uh, they asked me to come so i'm doing a workshop so and then uh in the virginia and new york they they're working on it right now so and you know i i, I don't have any intention to make money i told them it's like okay if you can cover the trouble expense and then you give me the best sandwich in town i'll come <laughs> so, and that's uh, i told them and this i said sure so dude i can bring you down to usf i can make it happen or help make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you gotta get the best sandwich though. Yeah. So oh yeah, or, we have or, very good. We have very good Cubans down here. Yeah, I was I was just gonna say yeah yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So in your in the materials, what materials do you use, um, and have you found a way to streamline it? Do you use the same manufacturer and and the whole design process? How long did that take? Uh, well, the company, the Soul Bones, uh, I, I made the prototype on my level. I use the material, you know, orthoplast. Mm. You know what it is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and I had an anatomy teacher at the uh, high school I used to work, and then he, he was about to retire. And I went to his office, like, you know, this you know, conversation. But there's a box, the broken down skeletons. So I used that and he said, I don't need it. So I, I got it and I just I used that as a template. I make a copy, a lot of those using the autoplast. And that's how, that's how I make my prototypes. And then I get to the prototype and then if I complete it, you know, my level, and then I send it to the manufacturer and then they will change, they will, uh, 
take apart and also they use make uh, the CAD file, uh, computer aided file, and then, then they're gonna do the simulation many times if it works or not. And then uh, they do the 3D printing mm. and they're gonna send it to me and then we I will test it, you know, if need to make some adjustment or not. And if it's good, and then we do call inject, injection molding. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's the mass production. So that's how mm -hmm. it goes. So mm -hmm. It takes, uh, so bones, it took about the elbow model close to eight months because the material shortage and everything, they have to please wait a little bit. So it took a little bit, but you know, if it's good, I mean, I mean, it depends, depends, but depends on the size too. The finger is pretty fast, I mean, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, the uncle model, actually, I'm using a different manufacturer. Just, uh, I wanted to <clears throat> see different companies. So I tried mm -hmm. it and then has been, I signed the uh, agreement about two months ago and then they're about to finish. So they're pretty fast. So. Wow. Uh, it's okay if I ask a yeah. question, Alicia? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I guess when, when talking to more manufacturers, do you find that, because I'm in the same situation now where, you know, I'm exploring other resources, other suppliers for different product lines. Do you feel that, you know, there's, I guess, a little bit of pressure that you're looking for another person too? You know what I mean? Like you just kind of, because there's something, you know, that there's that loyalty when you have. You know, well, that, that was the thing, you know, just, I, I felt, yeah. you know, just, I, I, I've been with them, you know, for a long time, but same time, but bottom mm -hmm. line is it's a business. I mean, now, I, mm -hmm. like I say, it's, it takes, it used to be five to six weeks to make the short yeah. one. I was double that. And then if mm -hmm. the, this, another manufacturer, they can make it, you know, I can, I can take the mold from the sew bones to the different company. If mm -hmm. you don't make for half or less than, uh, I mean, the, the, the price, and they, they can make faster. I don't have any problem with switching it. So yes, yeah. you made a connection with the manufacturer and then you get to that point. But bottom line is business. I mean, the customer, they're not satisfied and then I have yeah. to switch. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Time is money. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Thank you. So that kind of helps reaffirm some things. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, I, yeah, it was hard for me. It's like, shoot, you know, I stayed with this company for this long and now I'm reaching out to something else, which that was the only company I knew anyway. So, you know, there could be something yeah. else, I mean, better, maybe worse. I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to find out if they're good enough or not. So, no. And I just think hearing have you, how long you waited for your elbow prototype, that just, that's, that's really testing the patience for a prototype. Like, I know, I'm not sure about how Alicia's process goes for me, but you know, when it came to my bags, it's around <clears throat> that two and a half to four month process. So again, I'm trying to see, can I mitigate that to make it slightly faster? But it, again, every supplier, even from your big company to your, you know, low man shop, you know, just so we're, yeah, they're, we're all busy. So it's just, it's really difficult to try to, you know, push out product unless you can do it in house. I wish I just uh, also, I just cut also, I needed a time to save money to get to pay. I mean, the elbow model I pay about. I cannot say exact, but over ten thousand to get to, to make right. a mold. A mold. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, you know, I had to. If if you didn't get it done in two weeks, great. But I I just don't have enough time to save money to pay the yeah. fortune. So you know, this uh, it worked out okay. Yeah. All right. So tell me a little bit more about that right there. So you said the elbow model, we're going to go with 10,000 because you said that number. It costs you 10,000 to make one or to make all of the... No, 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 uh, 10,000 to from, from when I send the, my de uh, prototype on my level and then they start making like a cat file and everything and then the yep. uh, 3D printing. And they finally say, okay, good. It's, it's good. So let's make an injection molding. For the mass production to get to the to get to the point i had to pay over ten thousand so that doesn't include the actual production but that's the the basically the engineering or developmental cost yeah and yeah development cost yes okay wow yeah yeah it's crazy jeremy i i got mm -hmm. quoted 
a couple thousand for my new bag model I'm making. And then for my smaller pouches I have in design, I'm going to go for another talk. They're, they're saying my estimate for a small little pouch could be anywhere from 300 to 500 a pouch. And I want three of them for testing. So I'm thinking my DV2s aren't here yet. And it's, <laughs> you mean it's going to be three to 500 to prototype it, to come up, to sew it and give you the prototype. Each, Is that what you mean? Each pouch. Cause same thing what Toki was talking mm -hmm. about. I really didn't understand that, you know, the CAD software is so expensive uh -huh. to run. So you're, so, so even your in-house sewer that's using CAD <clears throat> miles for any, you know, laser cutting of the, mm -hmm. of the nylon. And that's, and that's, this person had an in-house laser cutter. That's $15,000. They have to do you know, they're going to charge a lot, but you know, like Toki said, if you have a really good supplier that makes good quality, you know, it's like tattoos, um, you know, good work ain't cheap and cheap work ain't good. Uh, <laughs> learning and yeah. This, it's, it's difficult from all, all realms. And just like Toki said, I, I think patience is a part of it. That has to be uh, understood and accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel, I feel like patience is just with everything that's going on in general with, um, everybody's kind of going back into work or sports or, you know, everybody wants to do all of these things, like, but there aren't enough people to work and everybody's still frazzled from the past couple of years and everything's sort of maybe at 75%, but everybody wants it at a hundred percent. And um, I, I just keep seeing that a lot where, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to start some sort of new project or, you know, a, a sports season and, but it's not all fully put together because everybody else isn't fully put together themselves with their own things going on at home and work. And um, so I think patience is, is really patience and understanding from everybody else in the world for us small businesses is really, um, really, really, I really appreciate it, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> because they're, uh, like we were saying, I, I have a, I just needed a, some, some clips, some small buckles, and I have a distributor here that's local, and he, his container ship used to cost three or four thousand dollars to import, and now it's 30 to 40 to 50 thousand dollars to import, depending on you know, what you have. And he says it's across the board. Um, and it's partly because that container ship is sitting in the water. We don't have enough people to unload it and there's just a huge backup. Um, so they're sitting in the water. Um, and then, you know, that money has to, that pricing has to get distributed amongst mm -hmm. all the products that are in that container. And if you have like a small item, you know, maybe, you know, we have like a million parts, maybe that's okay. But if you have a couple yeah. big items, that's a m much larger increase. Uh, my wood manufacturer or my wood distributor, uh, they import from Russia. And so now the, they're not exporting from that region. Um, and the wood was sitting on a container in the port of Long Beach for so long that they had to reroute it to Texas so they turned the ship around, took it to Texas, and then they had to drive it into California. So of course, who's going to who's going to cover that that cost, right? So the cost of plywood tripled, um, and it actually went up ten dollars a sheet within three days. Once things started happening with Russia and Ukraine, it's very very interesting um, with with what's happening. Um, just seeing, you know, we really are dependent on world economies and trades and and um, and things that there's a little bit of a slowdown somewhere it really trickles down the chain you know into yeah. materials raw materials import export and then who's going to drive the trucks and who's going to unload no, the trucking um, is a huge huge uh, mm -hmm. issue too yeah and then um have you seen, uh, I've seen a lot of price increase, increase, increases with shipping or um, yeah, shipping, whether it's postal service, FedEx, UPS. Um, Toki, has the shipping been for your item? Uh, well, my, my manufacturer is pretty big, so they have a good deal with FedEx or mm -hmm. UPS. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it didn't affect much to me. 
Yeah, but just like I say, is the delivery time is the one big time. It's just the matter material shortage. That's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. so Alicia, I think last time you mentioned brand loyalty. Like, so you have a machine shop that does all your stuff, right? And so you stick, kind of stick with them type thing as much as possible because you already have a system worked out and mm -hmm. the, you know, the time value of money is okay. Well, I have to go find this new person and then experiment with them and all that kind of stuff. And so Toki said he would basically jump ship because mm -hmm. if the next place was cheaper, faster, better, whatever like that. So talk a little bit just about your experience and why you may choose to stay with a little bit higher price place or if that's still the case. Mm -hmm. My wood distributor, still the best price. <laughs> I already checked. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, the, you know, the other, the other option is $10 more as well um, from my original distributor. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, they understand. And you know what, if you've been so loyal with the original company, um, they will a lot of times honor somebody else's price. Now, if it's reasonable, right? I mean, if it's like, if you're really, they're somehow really undercutting the other person, they, they can't afford it because you, you can't afford to it, pay your employees and keep the lights on and, and all that. So it's, it's a business, you know? Um, uh, so my, my, my guys that do the steel tubing, they will talk to other companies that provide the steel. So they go around and get the best pricing, but they've also been doing my part for so long, you know, since 2000 and, uh, five or 2006 that they have the process down and for me to take it to another company for them to do the learning curve and to have a lot of blemish items that you know it's not right and then I have to I still have to I I, I always buy blemished items and then discount them so maybe the rail didn't spring back all the way and it's welded and then instead instead of it being a you know completely straight line it's got too much of a bend in there for for my tolerance um and then moving, moving the, the um, tooling and everything, it just sometimes for me, isn't gonna be that cost effective when you break it down over time and effort. And maybe I lose three or four weeks of time finding somebody and then having them say, okay, we'll take on this project and then having them learn the curve. And then that adds another three or four weeks on top of it. So yeah, for me, for my, for what I'm doing, it might not economically make sense. Whereas for others, um, where if it's something that's, um, it's not, not precision, but something that's, uh, like the in injection molding, they have that process down pretty well that they could adapt pretty well. So it might be easy to find another another company who can do that. Whereas, you know, my things are very much handmade and it really takes, you know, it's an artisan's hands who's doing, who's doing, um, you know, the welding and the grinding and the shaping of the wood. So I, I think it depends on your, on your product, product line. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So Toki, I know they just got a 3D printer up at the front of the school and, you know, a laser engraver, that kind of thing. So it sounds to me like from what you showed us, the, the, the model, the foot, that that could be something that could be 3D printed, right? Um, so talk to me uh, just a little bit about the difference between like a 3D printed and like an a mold, injected mold, whatever it is that you, you've chosen. Yeah. And how come you go that route? Well, the, it, it can be done by 3D printing. 3D printing now, then there's a, they can change the density of the, the part. So it could be extremely hard, to be soft, but it's all plastic. So some part might needs to be have a little padding, you know, so that's something 3D printing cannot produce. So that's that's one of the reasons. So the last, last part of the uh, prototype production they use a 3D printing to make sure all the size, the dimension is exactly what I wanted. But uh, you know, actual product cannot be done by 3D printing. So, is the cost effectiveness or the production time better with injection molding than 3D printing? 
Did did you look at that at all? Uh, actually, I mean, I don't know. I mean, no. I have not looked at that actually. Hmm. But because three D printing, it, it just uh, it just wouldn't uh, work. So well, it takes a lot of time to three D yeah. print. Yeah, yeah. it mm. time wise versus just. Psh, 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 yeah, boom, just, boom, 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 <laughs> done. <laughs> that's one of you the reasons injection molding just, you know, you inject the plastic or anything and just done and just assemble. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for each part and print and just mm -hmm. takes time. And, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. And then your, your manufacturer also assembles everything for you or does it go to a different? No, oh, they, okay. assemble. they, they make a parts and they assemble. Mm -hmm. And like I said, well, that's one of the thing is there's only one guy is doing it, just my product. So I'm getting just like a lot of orders in and he just overwhelmed and he mm. just doesn't have. And if I switch to somebody else and then they have to exactly what you said, learning curve and everything, it's just like it takes another time. Like, so I'm not switching it. I mean, I, I, I might, but at this moment, I'm going to stay with the soul, the for the shoulder and elbow, stay with the same company, hopefully. You know, we we don't have any more issue with material shortage. Then we might go back to five to six weeks delivery window. So, but yeah, for the new product, I, I'm just testing the water. So, when we were in San Antonio, you mentioned something about you know when you work for yourself, you work a lot more. And when I was talking to Mike Stella, he's an athletic trainer who works for himself, and he said he'd rather work eighty hours a week yeah. for himself than for somebody mm -hmm. else. So in, in, in Lisa and Jay, and I talked about this, about me being a business owner and it basically I failed twice and I said, you know what, this is it. I'm, I'm kind of done with it. So talk a little bit about how it is for you, uh, as you're still working on creating these products and getting everything moving and rolling. And you said you got some pretty good deals going on with the department of defense and things like that. Yeah. So talk about the, the work life balance that you have created or yeah. are seeking? So, like I mentioned, I had to quit my job as a, as a trainer for high school setting. Then, you know, I take them, take care of my kids. Then, you know, the people talk about, you know, I don't, I don't like my job setting and then I'm going to start my own business. You know, the, the, the person used to work from nine to four and then weekends off. And then you have your own business and then, oh, so I can work, you know, less or any, you know, anytime, whenever I want. That is true, but once you start working for yourself, you're working every day, all day long. You know, I mean, I sometimes I get up 2 a.m. I have a little notepad on the, my on the side of the bed, and then it's like, oh, oh, that's how I can kind of use the social media, and then just and then start working on it like 2 a.m. It's like my wife is like, what are you doing? You know, I, it, seriously, you know, if you start working yourself, you're working, you're working. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, if you mess up, it's all on you. But if you do, and if you do fine, you can get all the credit. You know, that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. And the work balance, um, I'm trying to take time off as much as I can. You know, just, I mean, just, I, I don't want to just work all day, which I kind of do, but still. I mean, now, uh, the balance, I, I don't know. I don't need much. I'm really low maintenance guy. I don't need to. Money is not really for me. Uh, you know, I make enough money. I'm good. So uh, a lot of people it's like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't. I'm not going for money. I'm, I mean, I, I'm making enough money for it. So yeah. How in your process have you had? Where's the balance between the quote unquote really challenging? bad, bad days where everything seems to be, you know, falling apart versus now where everything's just smooth sailing. Where's, where's your ratio in that right now compared to earlier? Uh, well, in my, the mindset I have is I have no expectation for nothing. You know, I, 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 I do a lot of give, you know, a lot of Japanese people come as an AT here, San Antonio, and then I provide help and I, everything I can do. I don't expect anything back from them for anything in my life. And people expect so much. If you, if you do something and if you expect from 
if we get anything back. And if you don't, then you're pissed. You just disappoint. So um, mm -hmm. my mindset is that I, got, I don't have any expectation. I do just, all I do is just give. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, they appreciate. And if I can get anything back, great. You know, if I don't, uh, that's fine. You know, I mean, so that's right. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's the, that's the mindset of you're, you're just giving to give without wanting, without this, without the, um, overarching theme of, I, I need to get something back. So yeah. that's, that's really wholehearted giving versus, um, you know, ulterior motive type of a thing. And that, that really is a, you know, neutral, neutral mind and just calm and peaceful and in, in, in your heart and thinking. And that's, uh, that brings a lot of balance actually. Yeah, in, in life. And speaking of balance, you should buy the SI board. To <laughs> <laughs> right? Your core, your core steadiness, your head's wobbling all over the place. Come on, people. <laughs> all right. So Jay, talk about that because Toki said he doesn't need money, right? You, you are the provider <laughs> for your family, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, so. I need money too. But it, <laughs> you know, money and like, sandwiches. Too. Millionaire, millionaire. I just, you know, I make enough money and just, uh, you know, I see people that have money, but they are miserable. Some people, it's like, mm -hmm. you right. have so much money, but just they're miserable. It's like, so I, I don't want to be like that, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go back to you, Jeremy. Uh, so pretty much, yeah, my wife goes back to work. You know, we just had the baby January. She goes back to work next month, so. I'll be on fraternity leave. So the past couple of months, it was really from, you know, the original version, the dead bug. I just budgeted all that extra business money to make sure we were taking care of the past couple of months. And now, you know, talk, you talk about balance. I'm still, <clears throat> you know, Alicia knows I'm still working at my high school full-time and doing this. And now like at the point of Nexus, it's, it's like another full-time job. Like I'll, I'll admit it. I'm burnt out. I'm, I'm exhausted. So I'm kind of looking to make a transition to summer to running Nexus full-time with doing PRN to, you know, to supplement. So it's, it's kind of a scary move, but it's just, you know, I'm look I'm looking at, you know, and I talked to my supervisors it's about picking mental health. Like I'm, I'm really, really exhausted. Even though I, I probably look okay here, but just inside I'm, I'm just worn out. And there's a part of me that feels, you know, my calling is to keep designing things. There's because of me working at my high school, I'm months behind the four other projects that I've designed. And I hate just, you know, Feeling that behind because there's so much more I can do. It's just that, you know, I'm just being held back. It's it's you know it's a personal thing, but it's I'm I'm trying to achieve that balance myself. And then going to that realm, yeah, it'll you know the, the company will just support the family. And that's a scary part for me to think about. I mean, I know Toki and Alicia can comment more on that because if they have way more years years of experience, and that's where you know I look up to them for those you know for that years of experience because I've only been I'm year one into this and I'm already considering leaving my regular job. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm fortunate to be that busy, but it's just, you know, it's a challenge at the same time. Yeah. I, I think what I've, what I've heard from all three of us is some, at some point, the, the theme of burnout, uh, mental health, you know, job satisfaction with on um, many levels, working for somebody else and just having everybody else needing things from us within our athletic training lives. Um, and it's, yeah, it's totally different. Yeah. You're, you're working 80 hours, but is it, is it really work if you enjoy what you're doing, being creative and putting your time and passion into something that you can really see blossom. And yes, you can definitely see that within your athletes. You know, they come back year, year after year and they thank you and, and you, you've really changed the lives of your athletes, which, it, which is, which is great. Um, but having your product line and cultivating that that aspect of you is also important if that's really if that's going to bring you the 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 mental clarity and the balance and the sleep and um, there's still the stress there of like oh my gosh are we gonna what's going to happen with products is anybody going to find yeah. us you know that that sort of stress but for those who um, are really the get up and go, it sort of lights the fire underneath you to like find the way to just make it happen. Uh, and I think athletic trainers as a whole have that within them anyway, because, you know, there's, they, you know, cause you're so creative anyway, you're going to find a way to make this rehab exercise 
um, happen or you're short on supplies and you've got to figure out how to make a splint out of a, <laughs> out of a, a muscle car magazine, you know? <laughs> so it, it just, um, it's a little bit different where the, where the paycheck's coming from yeah. is kind of what lights your, what lights your, uh, your ignition, you know? So kind of talking about the paycheck there, uh, again, that's the whole thing. Toki, when we were talking in wherever it was in August, September, you mentioned that you were on, or you started the shark tank process. So you kind of, oh, you said, right. I think you said you went through like the first two rounds or something like that. Yeah. So fill us in there. Tell us, tell us that story. Tell us how that went. Well, the, the, the shark tank was coming in to town in San Antonio. There was the uh, Freeman, not the Freeman, Herbie Gonzalez in downtown. So, uh, you know, there's application process. So I did application and then I got that, you know, uh, you get selected. Great. I think everybody gets selected anyway, I, I think. And I went to the, the meeting place and there's the people that have actual product like mine. Some people, they just got a drawing. Uh, yeah. And then there's, a, uh, there's a, you get the number and then the, you get that number called in and you, you got, like, I think, five minutes or so to present what you have and then uh and then if it's good and then then you get called in and then uh, uh to go to another stage and then uh if it's good then they're gonna call you into i think that was a i think they have a good they're gonna fly you to california for to to present to shark tank actual people which i couldn't get to that stage but yeah. But now, I mean, even I get selected and I, I won't, I mean, they're not, I don't take their deals anyway. Uh, you know, usually they ask for like 20, 30% of your company. Of your company, right. And I yeah. was like, uh, then you, you, you borrow, you know, so, I mean, it, it just won't worth it. Mm -hmm. So I was about to ask. Uh, yeah. So, you know, like I said, I just, I, I worked and I have a, my friend does construction job and then, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, I help, I worked and then I save money and then, uh, I make actual products. So instead of borrowing money or go shark tank, I just, that's what I did. I just hate to borrow money. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, step in Jeremy. When you huh? I was going to step in when you're done. So if I had a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was gonna, just based on that, man, how do you, so kind of, I think we're on the same mindset. You don't want anyone to have a say in what you do. Right. You just, you know, just if, this the thing is that people are you know, it's like, I can, I can give you an advice. Like I said, no, thank you. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, you know, in my product is unique. I have a pattern on it, which nobody yeah. has. So yeah. you don't know, how to sell my product. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I was like, no, thank you. I mean, I will, I will do social media marketing. I, I do it on my own. You know, I, I, I learn by mistakes and then just, you know, I, how I improve myself. And so, you know, yeah, some people, they make a comment like, okay, thank you, but no, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, cause I think yeah. it's someone. No, go ahead, Lisa, you're good. Oh, I, I was just gonna say when, um, when somebody gets first gets their their product, they're they're really excited about it. It's good, it's a total dopamine hit, right? They're like, yeah. You know? And <laughs> and like finding the total dopamine hit of something new, something challenging, and really finding the way to um, capitalize on that within you know, social media or, you know, they're posting all the time or something of, of uh, they have, they have a, their new, their new dead bug. They have a new board. They, oh my gosh, I just dislocated this joint. And it was awesome. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I have found that when um, a lot of new um, writers have their products, they have a lot of ideas that they'd like to share with me on how to make changes um, and it's great because they're, because that means it's totally in their brain that <laughs> your product is totally in their brain. Um, and sometimes you've, you've, you've gone all those routes and sometimes it might be a, a good suggestion and other times, you know, maybe not, is not going to work with your, 
um, your core values with your company. But yeah, finding, finding that like initial excitement and then just keep riding that, that dopamine I wave. The, I love that dopamine reference. Yeah. That's how I feel every time I, my new patches come in. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's something new and exciting. Yeah. It's different. It's not routine. Or, or you know, you've built up so much hype. You're like, where's my patch? <laughs> when is it coming? Yeah. What's the feedback been on on the dislocations from the, the workshops that you've done and, and everybody else that's had their hands on it? Come again? What's the feedback been from oh, everybody who's, who's uh, done your workshops? Lobby. Yeah, I went to the first one when the workshop I had was uh, the San Antonio ISD, which I used to work there. So I know some people, they're still there. So, and some rookies, they've never done it before. Now, these days, there's uh, there was a group in San Antonio, Sports Medicine Associates, San Antonio. They provide the doctors to the games. So, you know, they have less opportunity to reduce dislocated joint if they see it. But you know, just they wanted to practice. So I might take it, you know, have you done it before? It's like, no, you know, those people, mm -hmm. they graduate from all Katie's mm -hmm. standards. So of course they didn't learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they practice, like, huh, it's cool, you know, so. And it's just another problem was because the new Katie standard, a lot of program directors, they buy my product, but they got nobody to teach. The reduction technique so it's like oh you know because all those uh, uh, each, uh the clinical professors they graduate from all standards so they, they don't know how to do it they didn't learn how to do it mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's, right, that's right. why they, then that's why the, i went to the university of houston the athletic training program they mm -hmm. they bought my products like well we bought it but we don't know so can you come it's like Sure, you know, three hours away, you know, and I had they have a good Chinatown, good food in Houston. So I was like, I come. I mean, just grocery shopping. So I went there, teach about two hours, and then did shopping, and then come back. So I, right after that, just I'm getting calls from like LSU and and uh, uh, yeah, other places too. So mm -hmm. yeah, getting, where do you, where do you think the next stage of your the educational component? Because yeah, you have your product line. Um, the other adjunctive things that you're going to do with your product line? Well, I mean, uh, well, yeah, I think it's the workshop will be the key from now on. Really, a lot of people is going to call me. You know, can you come? Uh, uh, the 2018, the NAT conference, that I, I was asked to bring my shoulder model because they had an emergency procedure. Uh, I don't know exact title of the class, but workshop. So, and I think that's going to be it. You know, I, I give my demo model and then they're going to ask me to come, you know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you're, um, you're, you're going to be at this year's national meeting. Yeah. Okay. Give us, give us the rundown. Are you excited? What are you excited about? What are you bringing? What's everybody going to get when they, when they go yeah, to the well, hall? I'm, yeah. I'm doing the social media marketing already. And then just, uh, I'm also tag team with uh, Jay on the same table. And then, oh. yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got to get together. Yeah. And then, uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm selling, the. There's a Japanese uh, gentleman. He makes the uh, scissors. The scissors. Cages. Yeah. So uh, I, mean, I think this could be with the name on it. I don't know if you see it. Uh -huh. It's great. And we tried to sell. And it could be a great uh, graduation gift for AT. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we, I, I'm showing, I'm taking my elbow, shoulder, and then a new product, the ankle, the big toe dislocation simulator. And then uh, Jay is going to be the, the, he put his product and then uh, the scissors. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then the, uh, it's going to be, I mean, uh, it's going to be big. Uh, it's a lot of people, I hope a lot of people come to our booth, which it will. It will. Are, you bring, it will. are you bringing the finger? Uh, I might take it. Yeah. I, might take I it. think somebody's going to go home with a dead bug with a finger in their dead <laughs> bug. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm bringing all seven color models, uh, oh, the current cool. patches on hand, the new ouch pouch, Medcross set, and I'm having hopefully three new patch sets coming in. And if I'm lucky, a special edition color dead bug and maybe 
one of the light sling prototype models. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll get that, but that's, I'm just dreaming if I can get the light sling prototype. But. Have you guys seen the patches that Jay makes? They are so rad. I was like, oh man, they, yeah, there's a lot of personality in each of those patches. It's really cool. Really, really great idea. I have some very funny ones coming down the line. Oh yeah? Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some of the little passive aggressive address some issues. You know, <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's just, again, it's, how, you know, having that personality telling a joke because it, it brings, you know, starts up conversation with people and that's mm -hmm. what you need. Mm -hmm. That's how you connect with people. Yeah. So, Toki, you mentioned not having a clinical professor to teach the relocation skills. It, it seems like that would be another area of product is, okay, well, um, maybe I'm going to have Alicia. I'm a partner with Alicia. Alicia is going to teach the relocation skills using my product. And then you can buy that as well. Or, you know, you can have that online course for your students as well. It seems like that's something else that maybe somebody listening to this is like, Hey, I, I don't want to create a product, but I can, I can do relocations really well, or I can get all the research, talk to the doctor and I can speak in front of a camera. So maybe somebody that's listening here or watching here says, you know what, this is, this is my small business because I'm going to teach these classes. I'm going to partner with these, somebody like Toki. And then that way he doesn't have to travel everywhere, but he can. Oh, so you, can you're saying that I can make like a, a school and I can yeah. produce uh, instructors. Yeah, yeah. Educational component. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I want to do, do that. Can I do that? Yeah. There you go. Can right? I do that? Right. People okay. Ideas. You two are uh, top instructors fun. already. <laughs> And Jay, so, Jay, actually three, Jay, Jay, yeah, yeah, all three. Yeah, you yeah, guys. I've, been, I've produced a couple. Instructors. Yeah. You, you know, at the meeting, you'd have, you'd have so many great opportunities to just set up a camera or you could even live stream, you know, all the, the booth. And so, okay, um, I'll, I'll record for you. If you give me your phone, I got you. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm right yeah. there next to you. I mean, tons I, of, I, have, I have a YouTube and I have mm -hmm. uh, you know, I made a 40 minutes, uh, the, like a lecture video, mm -hmm. at the university of Hawaii in Manoa, because the instructors, they didn't know what to do. So they asked me to make the lecture beside so which I made it. So, and then they're, you know, just showing to the student and they bought my product. So now, so yeah, yeah, I need, I need to, I need to yeah, definitely, definitely not adding more to your plate, but right, saying, right. Like, like, but you can have somebody that can uh, really do that already. Boom. Yeah, all right, well, I, I have a, you know, I have a, a lot of uh, uh, friends and ATs. They they just retired. Oh, nice hat. Where did you get that? Thanks. It was right. <laughs> Let me there see. Next to me. Uh, come see into it. the camera. Hold on. Let me see. What's that say? M N. Hold on. Medical. I can't even see from my angle. M N. Toki. Practice yeah. makes. Progress. Progress. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Dude, you could have like your own team of like MN medical certified instructors. Yeah. yeah. Like no, kind of like I want to be one. Like Graston or something. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. I want to be the, one. We do the little uh, class at the conference. Yeah. The, here we go. Version one. Version one. All right. All right. All right. I'll be getting picked. That's fine. Yeah. I want to see the video because I saw because I saw your video of the um, I think it was the elbow. And the guy was like, oh my God, I don't like the way that feel. I don't like that click. I don't like that pop. And so I want to see all the video of everybody doing their, their dislocations, right. relocations going, oh God, I don't like the way that felt. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's another thing. It was like, I have a demo, only one set of demo and just it's lining up. And now it's, it's a naval hospital right now. And after that, you go to University of Idaho and go mm -hmm. to LSU and then going to where uh, it's it's all lined up and just only one mm -hmm. set and then just me it's a workshop so mm -hmm. I guess hey yeah yeah if I got more instructors yeah it's yeah I have a I have a retired ATs they just retired now they got nothing to do so I can abuse those guys <laughs> to be and, and oh, the older ATs yeah. are probably going to be the ones that are better because they've most experienced. Life experience. most, right, yeah. right. I bet they got stories like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. I All mean, right. we had, I had two, I've never seen an elbow dislocation until I worked. Um, I was a couple years out and two elbow dislocations, like two weeks apart from each other, both in wrestling. Yeah, wrestling is, yeah, just one of, one of the state they yeah. have a wrestling. Mm -hmm. They see a lot and just mm -hmm. like, so, yeah. Yeah. I still haven't seen one yet. 
Jeez. Yeah, they're they're pretty exciting. One of my coaches, uh, the soccer coaches, her her son dislocated his knee, not his kneecap, but the entire knee, Ooh. and he and the family were out I've seen on. That too. They were out, you know, hiking on a camping trip, and then they it was like a thirteen hour trip to get him back down the mountain, float him down the river, and, and all all of this stuff. It was pretty wild. Wow. Hopefully, he's gonna lose yeah. his leg. Jeez. Oh, he's good now. I mean, it, it's happened oh, before. Exactly. It's happened before, wow. so it's. Yeah, it's oh, okay. sums up with his knee. <laughs> yeah, usually yeah. that's like a you got to pack that's him in the a... ambulance and go. But man, yeah, so, yeah. my my kid had a almost had to have his amputated when it happened. Oh my gosh! Yeah, wow. Well, this was his second second or third time doing it. So, all right. So, Toki, we're gonna kind of wrap it up here. Do you have any specific questions for Alicia? She's been doing this. I think she said roughly what ten years? Uh, two thousand five. Yeah, so you know, like eight ish years. Right, so she's obviously been in business uh, a while. She's been doing this on her own. Do you have any specific questions for Alicia that could help get you started? That could also lead somebody following you? Uh, no, no, um, I'm okay. I think. Yeah, it just uh, you know the the thing you do you when you started it, and then also Jay, just you wanted to do something different, and I mean, I wanted to do something different too. So, you know. I just, uh, it, we can have some kind of community to, okay, so there's a called baby shower. There's no business shower. You know, we should have those. You know, if you have anybody yeah. who wants to mm-hmm. stop business, we should provide yeah. them, you know, like a, a party. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's, I think that's what would be great if we can do that, you know, so. I agree. As long as they're not competing with us. Yeah, directly. But if the world is big enough, you know, you have a competitor, it's great, which means they think it's yeah. good. There's a the market for it. Mm-hmm. So instead yeah. of fighting, just why don't you help each other? That's just what I'm saying. But, yeah. yeah. So definitely like with the podcast stuff, you know, like the Candid AT guys, I've had them on a couple of times and um, over at AT Corner, they're out there in California, there with Lisa. And, you know, I've, had them on i'm gonna be on theirs and it's just like it's really good for promoting because their target audience is a little bit different than my target audience there's we're still all athletic trainers but like different points of the careers or different topics and so again for me i'm I'm with toki because i'm not trying to sell a bag you know i'm not trying to sell the mm-hmm. board it's just, it's like i'm just working to help them grow and so again that works that works for me it might not work for everybody but it works for me so <clears throat> but you you have a product this podcast is your product yeah right exactly. yeah, I, I keep telling them that <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is this is your product this is your business people wants to come to your show and then you know just people watch this is your product you know? yeah yeah uh, i didn't mean to dismiss that we, we, had, we had a good conversation about that last time and so. i agree that you know this is whether I'm making money or not, whether I'm not, you know, I'm doing it for the school or not, this is still my product a representation of me, something that I'm putting out there, some, some work that I'm putting in. And I've told, said it before, you know, it is a lot of extra work. It'd be a lot mm-hmm. easier to not do this at all and just be hiding out in the other room like I was showing Alicia before we started. So um, it's, it's definitely a process. You definitely have to be willing to grind it out. And then Jay with a newborn baby uh, and a business and a full-time job. And for me, um, I've decided that I'm going to be content here at my high school doing the podcast and being a dad of five, mm-hmm. uh, being a husband. And so again, if, if this is for you to go work those 80 hours and, you know, struggle to get by sometimes and have all those questions and, and, you know, fail forward or all those other things, then, then go for it. But talk to experts like Alicia or Jay or Toki or any of those people that have done it as an AT inventor. And well, again, I think one of my favorite things that I always that I hear Pat Flynn say is if you're in it for the riches, you're going to fail. But if you're in it to help people, you'll succeed. Similar to what Toki said, if your expectations are really low, you're just in there to help people without getting something back, then cool. And then everything else that comes after that is good. Yeah. So working uh, out so far for me. So, <laughs> and also like, like the CSA, you know, that's find something to make you happy. It's, you know, it is, I, I love to be the trainer to work in the high school setting, but uh, you know, there was a times like, what, 
why what am I doing here? <laughs> you know? Like seven weeks of football season. You know, you are dead tired, come home at eleven midnight. Next morning you gotta get up at six AM go to the clinic. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like what what am I doing here? Do I get a credit for it? And then it's like, do I need to do this? No, but I love what I do. That's why I'm doing it. But mm-hmm. and there was a time I was like, what, what, what am I doing here? You know, so mm-hmm. I feel you. All right. Do you say do you have any final wisdom for us to take away? Uh, well, I'm going to piggyback on Toki. Money is money, but health is wealth. <laughs> Yeah. And if, you know, if you don't have your health and the love and support of everybody else around you, you know, Toki, it sounds like, it sounds like you're the, you have support with your family to, to, um, stay and be passionate with what you're doing with your product line. So that's great. So, yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta wake up and smile. Even if you're crying some days, you're still smiling through it, you know, because you know that you're on the right path of, doing what you love yeah jay yeah same thing i'll pick it up piggyback off of all of them um i mean if there's just i think as i always say if there's a will you know there's a way you know i'm going through that same thing right now but again and i've been through it i can just i have to get creative and just find a way to do it you just have to stay stubborn in your vision and just take whatever path you need to to get where you want so just follow your heart there you go all right so i've got Toki's Facebook contact. It's T O K I. It's pretty easy to find him. He's got a picture of him as an exhibitor on his Facebook. Um, so I'll have that there in the show notes. At least I'll have her email on there. Jay mm-hmm. is really big on Instagram as Nexus Sports Med. So N E X U S Sports Med. Uh, and then on most social medias, I'm Mr. Jeremy Jackson or Sports Medicine Broadcast. So other than Facebook for Toki, email for Alicia, or Instagram for Jay. Is there a way that you guys would prefer to be contacted? Well, I, I did get. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, we'll start with Alicia. Okay. Uh, I did get back on social media. I said, okay, twenty twenty two is here. I got a new phone. I got a new tooth in my mouth. <laughs> it's a long process with an old, a really old, broken root canal and needing an implant. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got a full set of teeth now. Let's get back. On, let's get back on social media. So um, I've been hit and miss, you know, um, I've, I've had a few things going on in my life. So um, uh, yeah, so in, uh, so I'm there on Instagram doing, you know, just, you know, wacky videos swinging around on a rope in the shop, something like that. So, so I'll, I'll put Instagram, I'll throw that into the mix there. And is that yeah. SI boards? Yeah, or? everything, all social media is SI boards, S I S I boards, B O A R D S. Yeah. All right. Jay, Toki, you good? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I do social media heavily, you know, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, TikTok. Facebook. Yeah. I have a TikTok video. They have like seven million views. The one, the, my gosh! One of the girls. I don't know. One of the girls reduced this. That was the two the 2018 NATA conference. I just I show video. I didn't tag anything, and then she got seven million. And I do exact same. I get like three hundred. Like what? <laughs> what? What kind of crap is? <laughs> you know? I just so uh, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I do social media and then just people find me and just, uh, you know, so like I said, I do workshop for free, just with best sandwich in town. And mm-hmm. if you pay the trouble expense and I'm going to, you know, make the instructor school now. So yeah, you, yeah. I, I, take, I take application now. <laughs> <laughs> you had yeah. number one TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. And Jay, Instagram so great, right? Yeah, Instagram, and then my Twitter. It's at N Sports Med. I don't know why they couldn't get Nexus, but N Sports Med. I do have TikTok. I just haven't made anything yet. I haven't figured out what to do. So, one that's right. You got to you got to play with your strengths. Play to your strengths. So, <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll show the baby with the bag. I don't know. That's yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the maybe baby in the bag. Yeah, yeah. He could. He could a get whole, in the bag actually. A whole um a whole series. As he grows up. Yeah. 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 You also need to, like I said, you need to make the bag for the, the dad to carry the cool looking bag. 
diaper bag. I do. I the have dad, a special edition one. The dad bag? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Just with good design, not the girly stuff. So I, I literally <laughs> told my wife, I was like, hey, when we go on the road trip this summer, I need a backpack instead of this diaper bag so I can have my hands free to carry the kids and carry their stuff in the back. So there you go. I mean, so oh, wait, you put you put it you put your child in a bag and the diaper bags on the other side. Oh, no, no. I was just saying, like, we have like the little purse looking diaper bag for the girls. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so if I have to hold that in my hand, then my hands are full and I got two. I got a two-year-old and a three-year-old. I need both hands to hold the girls and have their diapers or whatever it is. So. Oh, okay. So you need a diaper bag. I just need a. I just need a backpack. backpack. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess stuff a regular old back. One of my still one of my kids' school backpacks or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a use for it. So. Wait, uh, I have I one. Have, I have one. Sorry, I have okay, one more ahead. question for Toki. The the joint dislocations. Those are all based on human models. Is there a difference with with child or infant models? What's what's the prevalence of dislocations in children or infants uh well it's just smaller and it's it, it's less less tension because mm-hmm. the size of it but all the model is based on me my uh, elbow and shoulder is my body size <gasps> so we're getting a piece of toki yes <laughs> chest is me what about the <laughs> massive bicep i like that yeah gun show over here <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay all right cool all right, so Sweet. if you want to be an instructor for Toki, hit him up <laughs> on any of the social medias. He's Send your resume. <laughs> you could check out Alicia's jungle videos where she's swinging on vines <laughs> inside of her building on SI boards. Yeah. And then Jay, go ahead and hit him up on Instagram, Nexus Sports Med, and get your pre-order for the dead bug or the patch or something like that. Again, this is sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Toki sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Toki. So if you're going to be an inventor or a business owner, don't take it lightly, do your research, but you know, be willing to, to make those sacrifices for whatever your need is. So for Jeremy Jackson, Alicia, Toki, and Jay, this is the Sports Medicine Broadcast, again, dot com slash Toki, as we talk to AT inventors. And if you want to share your story, ask questions, and reach out, let us know, and we will continue the journey there. Thank you. High five, everybody. Thank you. Okay. See you.